So next thing I'm going to do. We've looked at layers and masks. Layers and masks are fantastic. And um, layer styles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open an image again from the Creative Cloud. And what I'm looking for this time is the lady whose arm I can see. There she is. So I'm going to open up Tattoo Girl. That should give you a clue what I'm going to do next. So I'm opening that up. It's thinking about it. Downloading that from the Creative Cloud at the same time as it's uploading the other one. And there she is. Now what I need to do is to go and get the image that I'm going to emblazon her with, the tattoo. So back to that button second from the left at the top, which is the plus image button. And it takes me back to my files on the Creative Cloud. And I'm going to scroll up and there is the tattoo at the bottom, MacBytes Learning. So I'm going to add that to my image. So it downloads that. And what it does is it then puts it on that image and it makes it the right width, but it's way too big at the moment. So what I'm going to do is move that up so I can see it. Where I want that is on her arm. So it is indeed much too big. So what I'm going to do is just use my finger to rescale that move it down. It's sort of around there I want it really. Possibly a little bit smaller than that and just about put it in the right place. Now I also need to rotate that and I have that rotate option which is on the right hand side and I put my finger on that and pull and it rotates it for me. So I'm going to put that there, move it so it's just about right. I think it could still be a little bit big. And there we go. Once I'm happy with the placement of that, I'm going to tap that blue tick and it will then take me into the editor. And now I have two layers. I have the lady at the bottom, I'll turn her on and off, and the tattoo at the top. Of course, the tattoo, you can tell that it's not actually a tattoo, can't you? But what you have in here, these are layers and they are full Photoshop layers. So what I can do in there is open up the layer menu. So I've tapped on that that looks like a mortarboard and it has opacity settings and it also has blend modes. So if you have been with us for blend modes, you should be sitting there thinking, ah, which blend mode would it be? So it doesn't have all the blend modes available, but it does have a range of blend modes. And two of them work quite well for this. The first one to have a look at is darken. And what darken does and multiply, those two are quite similar. They take the darker pixels of the image and show you those. So obviously her skin tone is darker than the white pixels in the tattoo layer. So we're going to see her skin showing through. What darken and multiply will do is lose the white pixels. So I'll choose darken and you can see what you get there. And just so you can see that, I will zoom in. There it is. Now, I thought it was actually a better effect from memory if I used multiply. It seemed to lose the white fringing on it. If I had that set to darken, I thought I could see a bit of white fringing. So I think multiply works better. And now it looks more like a tattoo. What I might be tempted to do with that as well is to change the opacity a little bit which would bring some skin tone back underneath it. And now she is branded MacBytes Learning. Got to love it, haven't you? There we go. So whatever you wanted branding, as long as you've got it, um, even if it's, it could be transparent, if it's transparent already, then fantastic. If it's not, then you have blend modes that you can edit with it. So that is fantastic for an app on iOS. These apps are also available for Android tablets as well. So they work in exactly the same way. Right, now what I'm going to do is go back and get another image. So I will save that one. That will save that back as a project and it will start uploading it to the Creative Cloud as well. So you can see they're, st they're still there uh, uploading. 